Today we are breaking down how to create this modern cinematic film look in DaVinci Resolve. From a clean base to a finished film style grade. Let's dive in. First thing, let me show you my project settings. Here you can see my master settings. And under color management, I'm using DaVinci White RGB as usual. And my working color space is set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. Also, please make sure the 3D lookup table interpolation here is set to tetrahedral. All right, let's go back to color page. Today we're working on RA footage. And as you can see, I've already applied my CSD notes uh, to bring the image into the correct color space. And here you can see the output CSD settings. So now we're viewing the image in Rec 709. Now, let's add our first note and start grading the image. As you can see here in the waveform, uh, the contrast is already in a good place to start. The shadows are staying around 3, 4, but they are not crushed. And the highlights are close to 100 uh, without clipping. So I'm not going to touch contrast yet. Instead, let's start with white balance. Let me switch to vector scope. Now, when I place my qualifier on the image, I can see the skin is sitting slightly to the right side of the, the skin tone indicator, leaning toward uh, magenta, maybe violet. So, the first thing I want to do is bring this back to a more natural skin tone. I'll do that using the primary wheels on my control panel. By the way, you can do the same thing uh, with your mouse here uh, if you don't have the control panel. All right, let's check it on the vector scope again. Yes, now it is perfectly centered on the skin tone indicator line. Let me also toggle the note on and off. Yes, it's already looking more natural now. Okay, before we move on to the other notes, I want to choose a cinematic look using one of our LUTs. Let's go through them. Dustland looks pretty good actually, I like it. Let's check a few others. Wow, I really love how Eternal looks. Let's move on. Solara is not bad either. But I think I'll go with Eterna 2383, uh, but I'm going to lower the strength a bit uh, by pulling down the key output. Okay, somewhere around here. Let's check before and after. I love it. The contrast is a bit more refined now. Uh, the highlights are more controlled and the, the saturation feels more intentional, uh, especially in the skin tones. Before we move on, I want to do a quick giveaway. I'm giving 10 people my Volume 2 collection for free. Yes, 10 winners. That's 16 lots with a total value of $890. And to enter, you just need to do two things. Like this video and leave a comment. And your name will automatically be added to the giveaway. But remember, you need to do both to enter like the video and comment. The deadline is January the 11th, 2026. And I'll announce the winners the following week here on the Media B YouTube channel. All right, let's get back to the grading. What is bothering me a bit in this image is that her face isn't really standing out uh, against the bright lights in the background. Uh, in other words, it's sitting a little too much in the shadows. So. In the next note, I'm going to add a bit of mid-tone contrast to help her feel uh, more present in the frame. I'll use the primary wheels again for this. Let's toggle it on and off. Yes, subtle but definitely an improvement. In the next note, I'll bring her face up even more by using a mask. And here I want to give you a very important tip. A lot of times people create a mask around the subject's face uh, and then soften it a bit and then track it of course. And finally they use the gamma wheel to open it up. 
just like this. Perfect. As you can see, it does the job. But the problem is that Gamma lifts not only the highlights on her face, but the shadows as well, which of course makes the face feel flatter than it should. So instead, what we can do is exclude the shadows from this adjustment by using a qualifier. I'll first soften the low edge and then bring it up to exclude the shadows, just like this. Beautiful. Let's shake it. Yes, as you can see, we've lifted the face more while still maintaining uh, shape, contrast and uh, natural depth. Now we can move on to the next note. In this note, what I want to do is sharpen the highlights a bit uh, to make the image feel more filmic. For that, again, I'll use the qualifier to isolate the highlights first, just like we did in the previous note. Then I'll go to the sharpening controls. Let's increase the softness first. And now I'll lower the radius slider to sharpen the highlights. Great, subtle, but very effective. Now, Let's focus on her eyes in the next note. I'll create two masks to isolate her eyes. Great, and then we'll increase the mid-tone detail slightly. This helps the eyes feel more present and naturally draw attention. Let's check it. Yes, it feels more alive and uh, dimensional as you can see. And by the way, let's not forget to track the masks. Awesome, now we can move on. Before we wrap up, I want to retouch the shadows a bit and cool them down uh, for more uh, color separation. For this, I'll use the HDR wheels. Let's start with dark, okay, just slightly, and maybe shadows as well. Okay, I think this looks good. Okay, let's check what we achieved. Here you can see what the LUT is doing to the image. And now let's look at all of our adjustments together. I love it. We've taken a flat Reg 709 image and added contrast, depth and color separation, turning it into something more cinematic and intentional. And there it is. If you like this breakdown, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. It really helps. And don't forget, liking the video and leaving a comment will also put your name into the giveaway for a chance to win my Volume 2 LUT collection. As always, thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next one.